So David, we've been talking about how there's a lot of dry powder out there with the market downturn, you know, a lot of investors right now having to sit on the sidelines. Why launch this now? Well, this is not our first uh, bear market in crypto. It's our third one. Uh, CoinFund's a firm that's been investing in crypto for well, since 2015. And we launched our second seed fund in the depths of the 2018 bear market. That fund's done really well. Uh, so we have three seed funds and now we're launching this venture fund focused on early stage like Series A stage uh, venture projects and companies. Um, but in our view, this is probably the largest economic value creation opportunity we've ever seen in tech. Bigger than Web 1, bigger than Web 2. You're rearranging the entire um, value stack of software. We're going to build software on top of decentralized blockchains. Crypto is going to eat the global financial system and NFTs are going to completely rebuild the way we monetize intellectual property. That's a huge opportunity set. And so independent of where we are in market cycles, uh, we think crypto is the best place to be making tech investments. So what's your unique approach? Where, where and how do you plan to place your bets differently from all of that other dry powder out there? Uh, I think first we have seen a retraction in the amount of crypto investors out there. There certainly are a group of crypto native investors like us who only invest in crypto and blockchains uh, and all the technology around Web3. But uh, many of the traditional venture firms and hedge funds that started digging into crypto have pulled back, uh, leaving uh, ample opportunity for us to make investments. Uh, we invest along the entire waterfront of crypto, uh, everything from layer ones and the blockchains themselves to the infrastructure stack built above them. We invest at the NFT and gaming layer. And we're investors in Dapper Labs, the creators of the NFT standard and one of the most successful NFT uh, game crypto collectible companies. Uh, we invest in stable coins and payments and um, asset management and wallets and exchanges and really DeFi and all the different places where crypto is starting to see evidence of mainstream adoption. I think the differentiating factor uh, between us and other investors is, first of all, we're crypto native. We only focus on crypto. And second, we have super deep technical depth. We audit the smart contracts of our portfolio companies. We help them architect the tokenomics. Um, we're value added and helpful in helping people build companies. You're on the board of Rarible, the largest uh, NFT marketplace. You also co-founded the Apple Music Group back in 1995. And I'm curious what potential you see at the intersection of NFTs and music. There's so much kind of resentment in the music industry about, you know, sort of others having the power rather than the artists themselves. Could this somehow resolve that tension? For all of intellectual property, NFTs create a way to sell scarce assets, collectibles that can become more interesting or more rare or develop more attributes over time. That'll be true for music. It's been heavily true for pictures and videos where we've sold more than $30 billion of NFTs in the two years since they've been created, making I think NFTs the most successful consumer product released since the invention of the smartphone. This is an overwhelmingly successful new product category. But for music, it's been small. We've not seen significant traction around music NFTs, but we will. You know, going back to before the internet, music was scarce. You could have only a certain number, a limited number of pressings of, uh, of vinyl or, um, or, or rare um, merch items that people collected. But once music went digital, there's no scarcity anymore. A stream of music is ephemeral and there's really nothing to collect. NFTs put the collectability back into intellectual property and music will not be left in the cold here. I think artists, as you point out, are looking for ways to monetize their fan base and incre increase engagement. And I think they'll do that through NFTs, but it's early. I think there's only s s limited evidence of kind of music success anywhere near the scale of what we've seen elsewhere in NFTs. Right. Still, a lot of people who listen to music don't know what crypto is, don't understand. NFTs, but I wonder in the future, could musicians, could crypto be the new platform or potentially a more valuable platform than TikTok or YouTube as a way to build and, and, and amplify a following? The Web2 business model is to sell attention, right? To, to pump videos and feeds 
and kind of keep people glued and monetize them through the, you know, selling their data effectively to advertisers or targeting them with data-driven advertising. That's not a great model for content creators. Just don't make a lot of money from it. The Web3 model is to create scarce, limited edition digital collectibles that can be purchased and owned provably by your fans in any medium. And you can get much higher revenue per user. One of the most exciting things about NFTs are that the average NFT buyer spends between $300 and $900 per year on NFTs. That compares super favorably to people spend like 180 bucks a year on Netflix or less than $60 a year on, on Spotify. So if people are willing to spend more for, for NFTs, for digital collectibles, then more of that can go to artists and creators. And I think that's a business model that most people who are creators will, will embrace. So what's your, how do you see the music industry, let's say 10 years out? What will be different about it and what will you have potentially invested in to maybe benefit from it? So I think that first of all, to build digital collectibles or any type of digital intellectual property, there's a lot of software that has to be built first. We call that in Web3, those software we call protocols. And so we're investing in a lot of the marketplaces and protocols on which NFTs are created and sold and tracked. Uh, that think of it as NFT infrastructure. There are examples of NFT products that have come to market that have been very successful that we've also uh, invested in, like NBA Top Shot, which is a basketball collector's game uh, created by Dapper Labs. And so I think our intention is to uh, invest up and down the NFT stack, but it doesn't mean that we're buying NFTs ourselves. We actually have a portfolio company called Metaversal that does that. Um, but I think one of the big questions for music is, will the artists release their own creative works digitally through NFTs themselves, or will they continue to give their rights or sell their rights to record labels and have those labels do it for them? If they choose the latter half, they will really maintain the status quo of the music industry value chain. But if they pull back their works and they monetize it themselves by selling them through very low cost marketplaces to their fans, they can have more control over their careers and also all creators can have more money.